No, I am a citizen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, leave a clap me now, leave a clap me. <laughs> can I get dip again? Then cannot deport me. They can labor it an aggravated felony in immigration court. And if it's labeled an aggravated felony in immigration court, well, then no, you are now deportable. And me, I want to Google I had it enough. <laughs> mm, me Google, me Google what me had it, but me took free it. The Me Too movement cut both ways with immigration. You know, you have more men coming forward and say, hey, you know, sir, my wife, she did use out all of the money in the bank account and then kick me out. That's a form of psychological, emotional, and financial abuse, which may make you eligible to file a VAWA. This is Dale Elliott Jr., the Problem Child, inviting everyone to come out and attend my Problem Child Bad Pitney Stand Up Comedy Tour. Now, a lot of people don't know how to stand up, but we know eventually. South Florida get the show, all of them love it. Brooklyn get the show, all of them love it. Now, I have a lot more shows coming. Atlanta, Hartford, Poughkeepsie, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, Orlando, Tampa. If you don't see a city, just go sign up at DLElliottJR.com. And if you want to purchase your tickets just go to dl at jr.com the seats are full up the ticket them are sell out so you see if you don't want to be a part of greatness make sure you come out i'm out welcome to dl Elliot tv and i am here with mr seku clark we are here in a very different capacity from the last time you know very very different we have a lot of different changes now we are doing a podcast and we are doing it in our live setting in front mm -hmm. of people yeah you know, my always say my like the things different and where I try to switch up certain things. And this time we are gonna do a panel where we have people where come and them visit, them have various questions, them want to ask you, mm -hmm. but you are the liar. And me just there for, you know, add a little comedic flavor to it and make it nice. So you know, like daddy, daddy and boring. <laughs> you know? Exactly. No police now come here. You know, yeah. ice not near right or so. No. Yeah, they, yeah. them now no jurisdiction sure. in a New York, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> What's new for Mr. Seku Clark since the last conversation with me and you have? Well, since the last conversation, the Seku Clark Law Group, we are up and running in New York um, on 161st Street, Jamaica, New York, and we're getting ready to launch in South Florida in November. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You know, the, the, whole, the whole purpose of certain things is for expanding us. So like for me... Um, I am now doing stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually, I have a tour right now where me name myself The Bad Pitney. Yeah. And it's been a go on. And something very important happened since the last time we meet you. Tell them. We had a conversation in May. Now, I am a citizen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, leave a clap me now. Leave a clap me. <laughs> can I get dip again? Then cannot deport me unless I commit something we're crazy. Yeah. But me and a criminal. Me might be bad pitney, but me and a criminal. But it just, for people look upon it like an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. You can tell, say, we as immigrants are people who come here from other countries, really have to fight for reach, right? Mm -hmm. yourself. Exactly. Now, for my situation, it's kind of different because I'm a father filed for me. Mm -hmm. So I never have to go through, you know, I never have to find a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I never yeah. did have to do. Because we see people go through some things when they up here and we know, so you as a liar, you say various different, different cases. And I remember when we did present my case to you, mm. I said, yo, yeah, man, that is the thing. This is a simple thing. Just, yeah. you know, I have pay my case no man. You know, send it to, send, let's, let's make, we have to dedicate this to the, to the staff. Because my case, you know, you yeah. deal with it fast, but actually get through in a three months. Three months. Get them sitting still. So. Thank you, Leslie. Big up, Leslie, anyway, there. <laughs> So I, I Leslie did my paperwork. Leslie, yeah, man. Yeah, because whoever Leslie is, me used to get what me like, what me can come in, what me learn from Secular Group is the follow ups. And yeah. me learning a business follow up is very important. So mm -hmm. from the day I apply, I receive an email like every month letting me know the status. Mm -hmm. Every time the status change online, I get a call or an email mm -hmm. from, from the law group. Mm -hmm. And every single time, like even before my interview, I yeah. get a call from a, I don't remember the lawyer name, but he was like, oh, I'm here. Tim. We're a, a, a attorney, attorney from Tim. Attorney Tim. And he asked me if everything all right and yeah. what you expecting at the interview. Yeah. So I me like, me like the, the steps and the stages where it takes yeah. and the preparation where it, where it takes to get me to 
that level them. I feel like when I make me read too much things though for the question, because I don't <laughs> six questions. How question. was the test though? Joke thing. Yeah. All right. When we say joke thing, the the citizenship test itself, them ask me, them them say me I forget six out of ten questions, right? Mm -hmm. And me get me get the first six question right. Cause listen to me, we don't care what nobody say. A one test a Jamaican not feeling. We not feel a test. <laughs> <laughs> listen to me. We feel tests, isn't you know? We are not going to feel that test. Yeah. Yeah. Foreign fistier. Yeah. Fistier. <laughs> no. Not that. Yeah, man. Them give me a little booklet. Yeah. I know the way. I can't tell you everything about America right now. I tell you, I know more than the average America. <laughs> and it feels good, right? Yeah. yeah. When them, you go in and them ask them, this, this question is simple. You know, world War, who America fighting a World War II, yeah. independence, George Washington, them little thing there. It is quick and it is easy. I'm swearing the same day. Yeah. And it depends on the complexity of your case. You can't get to do that. Mine never really complex. So I get that. But, as I say, my situation is kind of easier. Simpler. It's, it's simpler. A lot simpler, yeah. Exactly. So, I wouldn't be the person where would I give you a whole heap of work or a whole heap of idiot. Yeah. When you have to deal with cases outside of mine now, yeah. how complex does that get? I mean, as complex as your mind can imagine it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> for citizenship, we've dealt with people who have been labeled war criminals. Okay. Terrorists. We have people who have um, had multiple felonies. Yeah. People have been um, previously deported and got back into the U.S. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. Like, as far as your mind yeah. can think, we have done it. Um, we don't have 100% approval. Yeah. And we usually don't take cases that we don't think that there is going to be at least a 75, 80% chance of approval. All right. Then. I always try to keep it 100 and say, well, I won't take the case if here is why. Okay. Yeah. Because what, what puzzled me is not necessarily to go to naturalization mm -hmm. before we even reach this. So the step, forget the steer or yeah. the green card. Yeah. That is a very, me feel like that even harder than if you even reach the, the end part. Absolutely. And majority of the people um, where you supposed to get mm -hmm. half a more deal with green card than yeah. naturalization. Correct. Right? Yeah. So for instance... I've seen situations here where some people come up, them get married, them husband gone, them wife gone, them don't know where they're dead and stranded. Mm -hmm. Um, see situations where, well, no, there's a big thing. I, I cannot confirm it, but no, there's a thing where people come through from bad as on them thing. Yeah. No, is there a way how these people can um, attain status here? So, um, yes and no. As, mm -hmm. as every lawyer like to say, it depends. Okay. Right? So in terms of coming over the border, um, especially over the last two years, there's been a huge uptick of Caribbean people, Jamaicans coming across the border. Okay. But the biggest misconception now is that people think that if you come across the border and you are labeled uninspected. Yeah. Um, and you were not paroled in where you get a stamp in your passport or a document that says you were paroled in. That is uninspected with that um, so, upon that. So if you are paroled in, yeah. it means that you are inspected. And the key difference with that is that you are able to adjust your status within the country. Meaning if you were to get married to a U.S. citizen, you can adjust your status without having to go back to your home country. Okay. Right? But... That's like 25% of people that come across the border or less. Okay. So if you come across a border and you are labeled uninspected yeah. and you were not paroled, generally speaking, and I said generally, um, very firmly, generally, you will not be able to adjust your status within the country um, if you, even if you get married to a United States citizen. Okay, so that's when they would have tell people for like, oh, you can go home, go receive it. Exactly. Me not do that, you know. That not yeah. happen, you know. Me not leave to go receive nothing, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, me not, hey, we got fired. You know, there's no other way. But, uh, but it is possible. I mean, we've had a couple of clients gotten approved by going home. They go back to Haiti and um, they're able to come back. 
into the country. I haven't had a Jamaican yet. I know a Jamaican not going to do that, but that but, is... <laughs> but but we've had other um other nationalities where they entered the country through the border uninspected, they got married, and then now we have to file a waiver. Once that waiver gets approved, we set an interview in their home country. The next question is typically how long do you have to wait in your home country? Yeah. Right? Typically, it's when an interview is ready and how long they take to put that visa in your passport. So it can be a couple of days, it can be a couple of weeks. So then once they do that interview in their home country, then they're able to come back in on that visa, then a green card is, is issued. Okay. Yeah. So there is... Because there, there's always a, there's a misconception mm. that everybody will come here, they have to get married. Biggest misconception. What if I just decide to come to the US on a visitor's visa and I overstay and I never go back? Is there any other way? All right. So those are two big ifs, right? So if you in terms of your options. Yeah. So I always tell people, if you come here on a visitor's visa, right, uh, you have way more options before the visa expires. Yeah, you have whole six months. Yeah, yeah. And you have options such as you can have an employer sponsor you. You can have a um, an immediate relative. If you're an athlete or entertainer, you can go to school. The, you you have almost limitless options, but once you overstay the six month, the the six months not overstay the visa, and there's always like miss, confusion. Miss, like if yeah. you have a ten year visa, you can't stay there for ten years. No, it's once you come in and you get that I ninety four stamp, you have six months or three months. Once you overstay that, typically over one hundred and eighty days, yeah, your options significantly reduce. All right, so I uh, when. Because I made the file for myself to the first mm. with the green card situation. Say, if somebody come here mm -hmm. on a visitor's visa, so what you're telling me, the form I-130, yeah. where well, we normally have to sign up, mm -hmm. can they, the son, the, so instead of son and daughter, brother and sister can file for you and adjust your status in that six months, although it takes so long? Yes. Because yeah, so sometimes it takes five, ten years. Exactly. So the thing about a son and a daughter filing for you, for you to adjust your status, you still have to maintain mm -hmm. the six months. Uh, no, you still have to maintain um, lawful presence. Okay. Meaning you have to be on some type of status. It can be visitor, it can be visa, it can be um, student, it can be church, but you still have to maintain some normal status. Once you go out of status and you have developed unlawful status, your um, your sister, the only people that can adjust your status for you is an immediate relative. Okay. Such as a spouse or a U.S. citizen child that is 21 years or older, generally. Yeah, a lot of people get that 21 years thing wrong because, well, I always say, my paperwork, USCIS received my paperwork March 20th. Mm -hmm. And my birthday was March 29th. So my birth was, let me freeze my birthday at 20. Yeah. Because my father, they used to tell me, say, yo, you passed 18, me can't do it. Exactly. And I said, well, let me find out myself. Make you try it yourself, yeah. So figure it out, same liar, find a liar. And like me, I read it online. And I said, no, but me feel like this can do. So me just take my money and me risk my money and it, me, me age end up freeze. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things about Immigration where people don't know, you just have to just consult a liar. I always consult a liar. Like I always say to many, many of my clients, the best thing that you can do is before your visa expire or if you have any doubt of your status, yeah. just schedule a consultation with any liar. The worst type of case is the ones that come 10 days after something expire. 10. <laughs> or even one day. That has happened before. And I said, why you never call? And they say, yeah, you know, with this and with that and with this and that. And well, I mean, no, it's a little bit stickier. Yeah, no. Because like, even for me, when we go to certain places, like yeah. our, when we do know, New York. To me, them say New York is a sanctuary state. Mm -hmm. Me need you for expound power what that mean. But I feel like this, like status thing, Mm -hmm. I think is a lot of people will come here and because this is one of the states where 
it is a uh, it is known that it's more laps like yeah kind of there's no the urgency it's more immigrant friendly yeah immigrant friendly yeah so the urgency for for do that not they are so like how it would have they are Florida with DeSantis them exactly and then um I think a lot of the the main issue that a lot of immigrants fall into when they come to the US is that they enter the country and then they're around either like a lot of Jamaicans or Haitians, people like them. So it put them into um, this complacent mindset. Like, yeah. oh, you know, yeah, we can get a job. We can make some money. We can send back some money. We go home. So I'm kind of good right now until it come time for you to try to leave the country or it come time for you to um, avoid ICE or actually make major progressive moves in your life such as purchase property yeah. or um, bring up a family member, that's when it start get real. And by the time it start get real, you have overstayed for two, three, know? four years. Because one of, to me, one of the wickedest things, mm. can you imagine? Well, for me, I would want the writers so right now yeah. and an emergency take place to a loved one at Jamaica. I mean, I bond that up. Why? I can't even like mm -hmm. go there for help. I feel like it would have messed with me mentally. Yeah. I feel like it would have mash up my it would have mash up my meds mentally. So that are one of the things them where when my day or me, anytime I find a bridge or anything, I always like make them know say, yo, I feel like we need for you need to get that out of the way first. But I personally think it's easier for a man to do it than a woman. Mm. Especially with the between the, the situation and them. So it's yeah. like when we see it happen, like when we see a girl in a different situation from a man. Yeah. I said, John, because most of the time a man hold the access to that. I mean, I've seen it on both sides, 50-50, to be honest. Oh. I've mm -hmm. seen it on, on both sides. You know, the the women get more offers, <laughs> you know, and them have sometimes more options than the men, but then the men have to put up with more foolishness. Me know that. Yeah, me know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me know the man have to put up with more things than yeah. the woman. Yeah. But boy, America is just a, a place, yeah, man. It's like it put you in a it put you in a piece of situation where it's like you like you do it. Oh, oh, oh you go. You do me if you do, or you do me if you don't. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and you know, I always tell people, America is what you make it. And yeah. um, especially as a Jamaican, I always tell other Jamaicans or Caribbean people. If you can make it out of Jamaica, you can make it out of make it anywhere. Yeah, it's supposed to be easy. Yeah, because honestly, if if me if if me never drive a Jamaica, <laughs> me crash ten million times since me there in New York. Exactly. Just man at now alone, the driving over here is so crazy. Yeah, man, it's normal. This is a melting pot of people. Women like with over here. Everybody at work. Mm -hmm. Everybody at uh, everybody have a goal over mm -hmm. here. So everybody at move up and down. So. I can see the speed of the city here. People would even remember certain things. They would just they are live, 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 and your queen yeah. ten year gone. Yeah, I just, exactly. Yeah, I'd even figure out where I do it myself. And and honestly, um, most of the cases that I've gotten where people have been in the U.S. for fifteen plus years without any type of papers, they typically come from New York. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, it's more favorable. Like it's a sanctuary state. So sanctuary state, especially in immigration terms, means that it's more immigration friendly. You can get a driver's license and identification, um, typically without any issue, uh, and not be documented. Whereas in some other states like Florida, um, you have to be documented in order to get a driver's license or some form of ID. So a lot of what took a lot of what is taking place right now with the law with change of Florida. Have you seen situations where no people come up here? Or have you seen a rise in, in like applications or people where now I'll be proactive? Because for me, I feel like the elections are gonna be next year. Mm -hmm. And who to like will will New York be a center of state forever? Like, me feel like things change so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you put yourself in a situation right now where you're not across your eye and that you tease them, you're going to end up in a some problem. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think 
I think with New York, New York has more of a richer history of of immigrants from all ethnicities. Yeah. From white, black, Asian, brown. Um, I think the history of New York is so rich with immigrants of all cultures and all socioeconomic. It's not just Latinos. It's not just Caribbean. Yeah. So um, I feel like that culture for immigrants is always going to stay strong yeah. in New York versus, say, a Florida where, I mean, at the end of the day, Florida is still a part of the South. Yeah. You know, um, New York was always more progressive, even in terms of slavery and giving black people rights. It's, it's always been way ahead of the South. So I don't think it will lean that way as far as Florida no time soon. So what, what would you say to somebody who live in a New York that kind of, when I say a lapse, but I take them time to start out themselves. What, what, what you that say to them? Look for your options. Look, start looking for your options. If you know you only have one option, yeah. well, you need to deal with it. You need to work with that one but, option yeah, that we have. You need to work with that one option. Don't just put your head in the sun and say, yo, you know, knock me out, go on, someone just i got a ride because, I mean, all it takes is one arrest. Somebody tell lie upon you mm-hmm. or you get a um, a police officer that doesn't like you. Yeah. And it's a wrap. Now you're going in ice. So the this this thing, so getting arrested, how heavy you think, how does that make your work much harder as it relates to naturalization and getting a green card? Definitely. So, before we dive into that, so the distinction or the difference between naturalization and getting your green card, mm-hmm. right? So to get naturalized as a U.S. citizen, the main thing that they look at is good moral character. Yeah. That's the number one standard. So once you've had your green card for either five years or three years, if if you're still married or, or just having a green card for five years, they look at good moral character. Good moral character is... Um, if you haven't had certain type of violent crimes, if you... DUI. Uh, um, I mean, DUIs, you can still get naturalized with DUIs, even okay. even two DUIs. Okay. But it's typically after three, that's when they say, well, no, you have a problem. Um, good moral character, they even have adultery as, as a farmer having bad moral character. So even if in your paperwork, um, you have a... Outside um, child. You have an outside child or some police report that shows that you got caught at at your girlfriend's house, but you're legally married. That's a wrap. That's that's against a good moral character standard. Or if you don't pay your taxes or um, not paying child support. The tax is very important. I feel like that's the only thing the man asks me about. Yeah. Man, I say, yo, you pay your tax them? Yeah. And show me a coward. I say, yeah, man, sir, I have to pay for them right or something. <laughs> yeah. So, me, me know that that's something where they really look out for. So, even getting the green card. Yeah. What about people that have been arrested before? Because here, say you live here and you, you get arrested before and everything. That yeah. Won't that affect the yeah. process of becoming a Absolutely. green card so, holder? So, there are, there are like a couple of things that they look at. So, if you get arrested for a crime within your first five years of entering the country that makes you now deportable, right? So sometimes they catch it and sometimes they don't. Really? That's yeah. how it go? Yeah, so if you so if you get, uh, if you are charged with a crime involving moral turpitude. Like a fel- felony that? Like a felony or something above like a misdemeanor. Okay. Right, within your first five years of entering the country that makes you deportable and the only way to get that removed is in immigration court, right? And that will create issues for you in getting your green card, right? Okay. Um, so I've had cases before where somebody had an arrest, like say, for instance, even leaving the scene of, an, of, a, of a car accident. Yeah. And that person is within the first five years I enter the country. They never got... Um, formally arrested, they didn't do any time, and then they go and apply for the green card, that officer can look at it and be like, you're not eligible for your green card because you got this arrest of this type of felony within your first five years. And that can 
and that can only be removed by a waiver or by an immigration judge. Oh, so that says a next setback again. Yeah, so that's a next setback. So um, say you got arrested for a crime six, seven years after you entered the country. Yeah. They are going to look at it as what type of crime? Is it a misdemeanor or is it a crime involving violence like burglary or some form of battery with a weapon? Well, then they can label it an aggravated felony in immigration court. And if it's labeled an aggravated felony in immigration court, well, then no, you are now deportable. Or if you have two of those arrests, you are now deportable. So those are things that can really jam you up with your green card situation. Like I've had cases even with domestic violence, which is a common one. I think that is common. That is very, 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 very common. Um, if you got convicted like twice, then you're going to have problems. To get a green card? To get a green card. You're going to have to find file multiple waivers and you're going to have to, you, know, you and your lawyer will have to explain um, which U.S. citizen or immediate relative is going to face some type of hardship um, in order for us not to send you home. So, oh, oh. yeah, so the, um, I always say a lot of Caribbean people there, you know, in Jamaica, you can cuss and go and body your yard and drape up somebody and it's no problem. But in the U.S., when somebody call the police, somebody I forgot jail, somebody I forgot jail, Yo, and it will be on your record. <laughs> And it will cause problems when you file. Because situations with me see is people always are partners. Partners always are have issues. And it's always apparently when you get the first green card, you get supposed to be conditional mm -hmm. for last for two years. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen situations where people get the two years and then end up in a, some confrontation with the partner and then they break off. Um, yeah them don't know how to move forward from that with yeah. getting. That's a very common one. And there are two ways that um, myself and the office go about it. So the first way is typically if you and your partner split. Yeah. If you and your spouse split after you got your two-year conditional green card, right? You can file it by yourself or you can file the removal of conditions by yourself if you can prove to them that when you enter the marriage, it was a bona fide marriage and you have the evidence to support it. But the problem that people fall into when they do that by themselves is, say when they file the green card, if they file for the green card um, in 2020, uh, in, in 2020, and they're supposed to remove the conditions in 2022. Initially, when they file the first green card, they have tax returns for 2020, they have the address for 2020. Mm -hmm. They have pictures in 2020. But then they try to do the waiver by themselves. And they're going to ask you, okay, so where are, where are the tax returns mm -hmm. for 2021? Where's, where's your evidence for 2021? And that's when the officer said, well, it seems like you weren't in a bona fide marriage. There is not enough evidence to prove that you satisfied the two years of being married. So that's where filing the waiver in terms of um, you showing that you were in a bona fide marriage for two years, they run into a problem and get denied. And the removal of conditions is one of the fastest ways for immigration to put you into removal. Right? To remove the conditions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, they send you to immigration that. court. Quick. That's how what call, yeah. that them call chrome, right? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. no. It's what the is removal chrome? proceedings where you have to go to the court okay. and deal with everything through an immigration judge. So um, so when we look at the case with somebody in that situation, we either say, all right, um, we're going to try to file a waiver for you where you don't need your spouse. Yeah. Or we try to look on it and say, well, what happened during the marriage? Did, did, did your spouse kick you out? Or did your spouse try to use your immigration status against you? Then we can say, well, you might be eligible for, for for a VAWA. And what is a VAWA? So a VAWA is something called Violence Against Women's Act. And typically it was made for women. Um, but men are certainly using it a lot these days. Wow. Right? Mawa. Because, because, Mama. Because, because I tell people the, the Me Too movement cut both ways with immigration. So, um, you know, you have more men coming forward and say, hey, you know, say, my wife, she did use out all of the money in the bank account and then kick me out. That's a, 
that's a form of psychological, emotional, and financial abuse, which may make you eligible to file a VAWA. So with the VAWA, you can file a petition based on the fact that one, you were married to a US citizen, at some point you resided together, and you suffered some form of abuse, such as psychological, um, emotional, financial abuse, and you're able to file a petition by yourself without needing the spouse at all. Okay. So the, the only caution with that is um, if you divorce, you have up until two years in which you can file a vow. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, so say for instance, me now, well, not me, but you have people where don't file them taxes. Yeah. And them live here three, four years and no tax return. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can help them with? If them come and want naturalize or if them want fix them condition but them not file them taxes, is that when it's out of your hands? I mean, me, me personally as the, as the law firm cannot help them okay. with that, but I would refer them to a tax professional yeah, because, all right. because we will get a request for evidence. The case will not be approved if you haven't filed taxes in four years. Yeah, I feel like people, people not and as people not get the things where you have to have in order before they even exactly. reach to you. Exactly. Yeah. But the, but but and and I mean that's fine because at the end of the day, what we like to do is we like to guide. Yeah. You know, I'd actually prefer a client like that than a client who come to me and think they know more than me. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the type of clients who say, hey, you know, someone sip on Google, someone have to send the scene. I'm going to say, really well, file it yourself then. And see, and see it work out. And, and see it work out. And see it work out. And I always tell people that 30 to 40% of our clients are people who got denied when they tried by themselves. Mm -mm. So, so those are the people who lawyers make a lot of money off of the, are, are the Google liars. The Google liar. The, go, the Google liars are, my friend tell me, say liar. And me, I want to Google liar. Me you know. <laughs> mm, Google, Google what me I do, but me took free it. Yeah. So me always try to go find somebody for validate what me I say. Yeah. When me know go school feet and learn. Yeah. Cause remember one time you explained to me there have been cases people where people have green card, go apply for citizenship, and citizenship right back. I say, hey, you know, say you get that green card there. This look fishy. Carry a green card, come and put it yeah. in a removal proceedings. Mm -hmm. And you did tell me say that that's something where you see happen. On multiple occasions with people yeah. where oh them get them green card. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I've had cases where the person come to me to file their naturalization. They come to me to file the citizenship, right? And when we go through the file, I recommend to them that hey, do not file your citizenship because if you file this citizenship, they are going to go through your green card application and your whole history and see that something here wasn't right and they're going to take back the green card. And I've seen people, I mean, come to me and look uh, after that has happened. And that is perfectly legal. So so if when they get it, you know, all the way through the gate. Exactly. Exactly. So so like if 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 you find out that um if when we're going to the file, there's a discrepancy between um, even when you file for your B1, B2 visa. That's the, what's that? That's your tourist visa when you just enter the country. So say, so say you enter the country on a tourist visa and on the tourist visa, Block it on the tourist visa, you said that you had one child and you've only been married once. Then you come here, live life, got a green card. Um, and then on a green card application, you said you've only been married or um, one time in your life and you have three children. They're going to look and say, well, there was a misrepresentation. The files don't add up and you have lied to a USCIS officer. And now it creates a big problem that may expose you to either losing a green card, not being eligible for citizenship and mm -hmm. a whole host of other problems. All right, so basically, them you lie it harder for you. Just yes, so. if you if you tell lie, it, it's significantly harder. I always tell people, no matter how hard the truth seems, just be upfront with it, especially to your liar. 
Yeah, man. So I don't want to make, like, make you lie. Yeah. Make you go lie. <laughs> I really lie, but. <laughs> yeah. But. Make the lawyer lie. No. We make the lawyer know how to match it out properly. <laughs> What's <laughs> Remember they say you work, you know. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Liar, liar. But hey, make say it again, Muma. <laughs> liar is there to tell a lie, you know. <laughs> liar is yeah. like yeah, that one then. Do the maths. Yeah, the liar, the liar, the representation we need. Mm-hmm. Because in boy, the situations them when me I say over here with people, a lot of time is complacency. A lot most of the time is complacency and fear. Yeah, because so like you, how does your typical case go? Is is it a case where come you know some of the time Jamaican people kind of laid back? I don't know if Jamaican people are like your highest um, in terms of clientele, but every time when me meet somebody will do that, yeah, them not them not urgent, yeah, because me have bridging. We call me and say, yo, I want that dog your number, you know, because I don't understand how you get through in a three months. And I yeah. said to the man, say, yo, brother, you live here 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. Where you are with, pan? Exactly. So I me, me wonder if I feel like you know where somebody would come to you and you would tell them a price. You know, Jamaican people love ball. Mm-hmm. And them say, yeah, man, we are going to put this off. Yeah. But then them bag expensive. Exactly. Them shoes expensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Them rent high. So, me can sit through that. The price of the price. Because me see the price of web. Me see some of them lie I charge. Mm-hmm. And me not, me, not, me not understand why the urgency not dead. Eh? Forget that part you out of the way if you tell yourself, say, yes, yeah, so you're going to live. And yes, yeah, so you're going to take care of all yeah. your family. Mm-hmm. Again, the complacency and the fear. Like a lot of people, f- they probably know deep down what the answer may be, but they just fear here in the reality. The, the fear that they only have one option or no options so them just leave it alone and that even may be a misconception because them hearsay, 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 hearsay yeah, it's yeah. a lot of hearsay it's a, it's a lot of hearsay and, and sometimes it's frustrating for, for attorneys like when um, you know the law and you're advising a client and them say no man I'm going to think so because my friend <laughs> They tell me, say, and she have the same situation and them get through. So why me can't get through? The common, the common one with that, um, I remember I posted that video on TikTok and oh my God, them flame me up there, them burn me out, them burn me out and say, I lie me and tell me, no, no, me I talk about, which is if a green card holder, my, um, if, if, if an immigrant that's out of status, if you are here out of status and you marry a green card holder, you can adjust your status right away while the person is a green card holder. That is true. The, the law says no. You can't that, do that. If you're out of status, no. That, here said trip me. Yeah. <laughs> me hear that. That green card holder has to be a US citizen if you're going to adjust your status in the US. And people on TikTok say, especially the Jamaican, them say, I lie, I tell you, you know where you are. Go back. <laughs> I mean, say, go back to law school. Go back to law school. Go back to law school. I mean, I tell you this is that they must say that in our mattress. On the ground, mm-hmm. just a type on their phone, mm-hmm. not doing nothing, are out yeah. of the corner, sit down with them friend, yeah. and just a chat a bunch of foolishness. Yep. And what I realize as well about most people, most people to them friends, to them close, close friends, and even family, they lie about them exact immigration situation and the facts. Me notice that. That go on with it. I mean, I, I've done consultations where you have husband and wife or even mother and data, we're doing a the consultation, them give me the facts, and one person step out and them look at them and say, All right, here one. You see, this are going, but don't <laughs> make them know what are going. Exactly. You know, so don't listen. People always listen to other people and say, Yo, man, of, of course you can't file the paper. So, because this person said them do it so and them get through and we know. I said, did you, did you see the paperwork when them filed it? No. That is a big misconception because even when, even the little time when they are firing, I live a fire in five years now. And the, the amount of people where I did think, mm. all right, like status wise and everything, I did think that. Mm-hmm. And when me make everybody know something, naturalize the other day. Mm-hmm. That are when so much people rise up out of the ashes. I say, yo, <laughs> I say, you never have the papers. You never have the papers. Me never know, so you never yeah. have the papers. So 
so me never understand like why why hide because so my time they me are the same people that me I go a road with mm-hmm. and clean and them clean and them drive the nicest. Me I wonder me I say so police never pull you yet like yeah. where yeah you know have oh. a pass where where you have a, over here mm-hmm. but at that you live in our state yeah where you can get away with them thing there mm-hmm. so I just the the comfort and next thing what me did I go ask you because somebody tell me. To ask you, so me I keep up all of the questions when people tell me for ask you. Cause I have people women know we never come here because they say they don't want nobody know them business. Mm-hmm. You know Jamaican people. The number say, one Jamaican line. Them afraid. I mean, people know my business. Imagine, imagine we get an opportunity to sit down and say with a lawyer and ask question. Yeah. You not paying no money. Mm-hmm. I snap come through the door. No. And you're afraid because you don't want nobody know your business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make no sense. Blessing and curse of a Jamaican. Uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, send me come here for a visitor's visa. Yeah. And made the five months in. Can I extend it another six months? Yes. Yes, you do have the ability to file a visa extension. Okay. Right? Um, but you have to do it before the six months. You have to do it before the six months. You have to do it before the six months. And you're going to have to prove the reason why you're staying and that you have financial support um, for the amount of time that you're staying. And another way that I tell people is that if you had some type of medical condition, if you have, if you had to see the doctor, that's a, typically a good reason that you can extend your stay as well. And meeting an accident and them type of thing that yeah. Oh, and 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 that is something where somebody could have come to you and you help them deal with, exactly. right? Exactly. So give me a broad, like uh, uh, all of the immigration things and what you deal with because you do, you know, you, you wear many hats. Yes. So you have, yeah, you, you deal with crime too, like, like. Criminal, yeah. You deal with criminal lock up and them thing there. Yes. Yeah. And we have, a, um, so I, so I do it and we also have an attorney in the firm that does exclusively criminal cases. But um, one thing when I started an immigration firm, one thing that was very important to me is that we were able to handle everything immigration. Yeah. Every single thing in immigration. So if it's family base, if it's deportation in, um, and you have to go to court, yeah. we handle that. If, it's, if you have a business moving from the Caribbean or moving from anywhere into the world, um, into the US, we're able to handle that. If you're a pastor or have some type of religious um, affiliation, we are able to handle that. If you're an athlete, musician. if you're a musician, if you're an entertainer, we're able to handle everything immigration and we speak within the office um, four languages. Okay, so, you have to, so, so if I want artists and I live here, you're in the papers, I can't come link you and say, Rrr. well, Again, we go back to the overseer thing. Oh, yeah, so now that the gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's better, it's better you link with early before you get to that point. I mean, I remember one time a, an athlete came to me, and this is an athlete that is a medalist on the world stage. Yeah, and they're here auto status for like two years. I'm gonna say, yo, why you never um file for a sports visa and then get your green card as an athlete? And him said, they never know. And it just takes, you just have to just go you, ask. You just have to just ask. You know, you, you just, just have to just ask. And don't ask the man who sit down on the corner with you at the time. Because exactly. he's going to tell you foolishness. He wants you to stay just, he wants you to stay right where he's there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the problem. So mm. like, where you are doing right now, mm. me know you get wallet for pushback. Because even me receive pushback for take up myself, I try to do them like something. Yeah. Mm. So for you, where you as a liar, you know, say right now we have other liar where I say, yo, why am I giving them thing for free? Exactly. Why am I use social media so much? Because and everybody really understand the importance of this and how much yeah. this can help. Uh, information, because I mean, I am not a stranger to immigration. You know, mm-hmm. I've had my issues. I know what being out of status and overstay feel like. So why not share it? Why not share it with the next man? One of the biggest things that I've been proud of um with the firm and the jamaican office is that i now get more people from jamaica who they are now bringing their businesses here yeah right 
and have more Jamaicans now who are getting visas and green cards because they are nurses or they have a master's, they have a high level degree. And all it's uh, all that started from was, yo, you know, some see this on TikTok and never know, say, I couldn't get a visa or a green card that way. Yeah. So that so that means the message is reaching them. So I am hoping that my firm can shift the whole culture and the whole narrative that there is one way. Yeah. Because I want to me find you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> me, me I scroll through TikTok. Yeah. And me I say, me never ever say a Jamaican a, a talk about immigration and everything there. Yeah. As a liar. Me I say, yo. Mm -hmm. So when did it come to my mind, me I say, yo, I want me, me want to interview the man here because for my podcast, me like when me are in me like upwardly mobile people. You know, yeah. have to be an artist or you, you exactly. can be. You have to just dare and you have to make a change. Yes. So when me see I do it, me read under the comments them. Me see liar them under the comment them. Mm -hmm. the, the, right now me have liar under my comment. Me post the citizenship thing. Mm -hmm. Me black out the number. Mm -hmm. And me blur the information. Me see people are comment. Congrats, you sell out. <laughs> <laughs> see, man, I say, congrats, sell out. Yeah. Um, is this an accomplishment? Me see people comment. Um, Oh, yes, him gone now, him sell him soul. Me I say, well, on, wait, what am to do? You know, I, I just not I, I say nothing. Yeah, I don't say nothing. But is, is, is the misconception, some, somebody tell me something, oh, no, you're not Jamaican. No. Because you get there. No, it no. don't work like that. No, them can't change that. Plus, you can have two passports. You can have the Jamaican. The, the Jamaican book without the chip. And you have the blue book with the chip. The blue book have a chip in it? Yeah. Me never ever know that. Me never ever, me never ever know that. <laughs> but them never take yeah. the Jamaican book. Me have my Jamaican passport. Yeah. So when when a man before man I said yo you have a passport with you, yeah man call them I take it you know. No. Me I say, who tell you know this? Exactly. <laughs> me feel like one bag of misinformation mm -hmm. I go about where immigration is concerned mm -hmm. and is something where it's like everybody nobody no want to talk about it. Nobody no want to. Everybody about are shy it. from it. Nobody don't want, everybody no. oh, me don't want that person, I know my business. And somebody say, if people find out, them take advantage of you. That too, and, and, True. and you know what, there's a stigma that has been created about being undocumented, especially the last eight, eight years. The xenophobia where if you're undocumented, you are now affiliated with a subcategory of people are less than... Oh. You know, so I think a lot of people see it as some type as, as some type of shame. There, there, there's a lot of shame that goes on with not being legal and um, not having having status. And politically, it's been made worse. Yeah. You know, so it so that shame people just prefer for stick to people who are like them, who are in the same situation. Okay. Or they are just not in it at all. I mean, other other lady come to my office and you know, very well dressed lady in her sixties, spoke very very proper, you know, um, Van Cleef jewelry Cartier. Van Cleef. Yeah, you know, um, twelve grand. Yeah, and she showed me her degrees first. Don't tell me such so on the papers, you know. She hasn't had her papers in thirty years. She white. No, she's Jamaican. With Van Cleef? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you could have just walk in and just give the Van Cleef no. and say, yo, just deal with this for me now. No, yeah. And, um, you know, that leads me into another topic. The issue that um, somebody like her who is educated, affluent, fall into is that um, if you did a marriage... And at any point in time, that marriage was deemed to be entered into just for immigration purpose. And it's labeled marriage fraud. Yeah. You can't come back from it. From a marriage fraud. So if you get labeled, if you get a denial and that officer said that this marriage was entered into fraudulently and there is evidence of you exchanging money for the marriage um, or, or bribing or... You lie and then find out that you never lived together and you just enter the marriage just for the green card and they label that marriage fraud. Even if your next marriage real, you could have real four, happy, you could have four five Pitney. kids, everything <laughs> great, you will not get a green card from that. So that is one of the biggest pit, 
pitfalls as with people is that first marriage, you know, either them never filed it properly or them never prepared properly. And it's no labeled as a fraudulent marriage. You cannot, it, it's, it's rare, extremely rare to come back from. That and if you tell lie that you're a US citizen and you vote. Those two things. How you vote? When you're a citizen. People do it. I, I don't know how. I how? don't know how they do it. And we have plenty of those cases. How you vote? You know you're a citizen. How you vote? People do it. And you and that is one thing that will create a bar for um a bar for you. Yeah, because I receive things for like go up on jury, jury duty and everything there. I mean, I feel like respond to them. I mean, you know, say, yo, me and a citizen, you know. Exactly. So you have to say, you have, you have Jamaican people who go sit down in a court and, and say, I'm guilty, you're on Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Them just want to feel, yeah. you know? I just a yeah. feeling. But, but again, you know, like as I said, there's a big stigma with being undocumented and there's a lot of shame. And, and I think it's, I think of, of anybody who's gone through the process and they are now on the other side and now a green card holder or a citizen. I think... It is almost like your your duty to to make somebody else know, make it make easier. Somebody else know, say, hey, um, this is how my situation. They go, or if you don't want to tell them your business, just say, hey, here's a good liar. Talk to him first before you make that move there. Talk to him when you just come. Yeah, don't don't, don't waste put it, it out. To the side. Yeah, because yeah. to me, that's the biggest thing. You're mm -hmm. there, you're comfortable, you're not proactive, you're reactive. Yeah. And I feel like that that's super important when you come here. If you come here and make up your mind, say mm -hmm. that you're gonna do. Yeah. You need to start get yeah. things together from them time there. Mm -hmm. And people need to realize, cause me did have to learn this the hard way now. Mm. And everybody will give you advice, I give you advice for benefit you. Exactly. Yeah. Because so my time, the moment you start the better for yourself. Yeah. Them don't want to see you there, so them mm -hmm. want you side of them, or them yeah. want you sit down and waste time with them. Because them say um, it's one thing that is wickeder than um, police and thief and murder rate of Jamaica and it's bad man. Yeah. So but that is true. <laughs> you know, so um, people have to be aware of who they are looking to for advice. Yeah. You know, they have to be aware of who they are looking to for advice. Just go to the professional do, and done. Pay the hundred or the two hundred dollar, you know. And pay that, it and done and get yourself the peace of mind and start out the something right. Yeah, when me see man waste money pan a foreign, <laughs> me as a person where want to deal with my thing. Yeah. I knew York this. If you drive a car in New York, you pay about three times for park somewhere. So you're gone about sixty dollars already. Mm -hmm. Just for park. If you go out and you drink. Are you smoke? If you wherever you are, smoke a pack of cigarette, where they smoke weed, whatever you do, the amount when the bill they rack up, me can't see how it possible say yo, me not go get that part you out of the way first. Mm -hmm. Why me not go prioritize this? And when me see I'm to enough people, enough people, <laughs> which to me ridiculous, I love yeah. make enough people know. Do what they are doing, you know, because they have a partner and they are wait for them partner to do it first, then the partner exactly. do it for them. And me I say, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Come yeah. in line up, boy. Love now nah, make me. No. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Love now nah, make me do that. Yeah. Every time I think about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and I think even if people just look on the raw facts, um, as an individual in the U.S., you will make 40% more or 50% more in income being documented versus undocumented. Facts. 50% yeah, no. more money. 50% more. Everything in between is ambition. Yeah, you don't so, say. So, 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 so you that, I work hard for nothing. Yeah. So so people look upon it and, you know, them go, um, they get complacent and say, yo, you know, I'm going to make more money now than if I was in Haiti or Jamaica or... Colombia, I'm making more money now, so I'm good. But they don't look at it and say, all right, if I make this extra move, I'll be able to triple or quadruple what I've made, which is more exactly. for me, more for my family. Yo, people feel like foreign in New York. Exactly. That alone. Mm -hmm. Over here, dirty, you know? Okay. All right, New York, nice, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Don't me know how nobody get offended. But yeah. America big, you know? Yeah. Like you have places in America where beautiful. Mm-hmm. You can't go Utah. We can't go so much place in America. So when you like box yourself in a one in a one era mm-hmm. because the situation and don't work for try to change it. Yeah. You miss out past so much things. Yep. I use a man, you fly, me see you all over the world sometimes. <laughs> you just mm-hmm. stick up yourself and you're just gone. Mm-hmm. No, the thing is, not everybody want Correct. everything out of life or yeah. everything life after after. Mm-hmm. That's not it. But for me, it's just for give somebody else the opportunity. Exactly. Like my mother and father did come here mm-hmm. in I see them situation. Them do them do them best to try to get me here. Mm-hmm. Now me there and me I change. My life. So it's like, for somebody who live here, who even have kids at Jamaica, you know what? Give that person there the opportunity. Like, exactly. that, like you get the opportunity and you settle with it and that's so you want your life stop. Yeah. Like you just want to work every day. No pay no tax. Because you don't get benefits when you're undocumented. No. So mm-hmm. when you're old, you're just, you're sick and you just can't do nothing. And it's harder. Yeah. And it's harder. Yeah. So, I just feel like people just need to give other people the opportunity because a lot of people have family, kids, yeah. all them things that were there in Jamaica. Exactly. And them just need to do that. So you, do you handle filing as well? Yeah, man. So we do everything from A to Z. From, I mean, now I even have people coming to me before them get married. Yeah. Right? So we handle with... Um, we handle people with saying, all right, these are the documentation and evidence that you're going to need. Yeah. Then we actually do the filing. We actually prepare them for the interview. If they're in court, we prepare them for the hearing. We file extensive motions um, with the court. So we do everything from A to Z. Do you attend interviews? Because some of the time when I was doing my um, naturalization, mm-hmm. I see people turning up with liars. Absolutely. Of course, it's an extra fee. But oh, it's an extra it's fee. A, it's an extra fee. <laughs> but it all but depends some on the need, complexity. Yeah. And I mean, some people need to have an attorney there. I mean, I've gone to interviews with people and when I am walking in, I see the ICE officer um, just kind of turn back. The yeah. ICE officer? Yeah. I tell the person for turn back? No. So, the, so, so I would see so I'm walking into the office and I would see like the ICE officer was there waiting. Like they hear the name call and they're yeah. there waiting. I have to just touch him and say, and, No, they see the person coming with me. Well, maybe it's come a big. So you can't, can't tell him run. Turn back. can't tell him The ICE officer turn back. So, I mean, if you have a very complex situation or, or a sticky, sticky situation, I mean, definitely bring an attorney. I mean, um, for me, if, if I believe the client 100% needs an attorney there, I definitely strongly advise it say hey pay this money and have and have myself or um attorney team accompany you to the interview exactly so then just nothing listen yeah to nobody yeah. because everybody have a different yeah case yeah and exactly. at that whole heap of people not, not understand so yeah. f- for instance you have people where not where you have people where good and they want to file for people at jamaica like bring them up. Mm-hmm. You can explain that more to people. Like oh, the file, like not the filing process, but you say you handle that, right? Mm-hmm. So to, with the bringing them up, walking them through the stages, making them know what are they. Is, is it as complex as adjusting status, or it uh, a bit it, easier? It. it it all depends. It's a it's a case by case basis. Okay. You know, it really depends on what you have going on in your situation. You know, the person filing for you. Um, what's your situation? Or that person in Jamaica? Do they have an arrest record? How long is that arrest record? Um, have they ever been trying to enter the country and get turned back at the airport? You know, did they ever lie to? an immigration officer. Mm-hmm. So these are the different things that we need to know. And that affects how complex the case may be. Okay. And yeah. that and that have a lot to do with even with marriages and stuff, the amount of money your partner make definitely have a lot to do with um you trying to what them call it affidavit of support. Affidavit of support. So um there are certain poverty guidelines in terms of how much the person can make. 
and it's going to be contingent on one, the dollar amount, like say they make $30,000. So a person who makes, say, $35,000, I suppose, petitioning for somebody out of the country, that will work. But say that person who make $35,000 have two or three or four dependents, well, then it won't work. I suppose that person had sponsored two other immigrants. Before. Before that can't work. So it's a scale that we have to look at as well. Or you can just get a joint sponsor. That did happen for me. Yeah. When me did I try to come up, when me was supposed to get five of my issue was finding mm -hmm. half a day with a support. Yeah. And it, it's so weird because in my mind, me I said, hold on. At the time, me at 21. Me not beg nobody nothing. Me I make my own money. Me I said, why it's so hard for somebody just do this? I don't like me I come up, come beg them. Yeah, it's personal. And Very you know personal. What, um, sometimes what we have had to assist our clients with is a person who is on the fence with assisting somebody with an affidavit of support. Yeah. Right. Typically, the standard is, you know, you have to make X amount of money. You, you have to have um, pay stubs, tax, tax return. returns, two years, right? Sometimes that person thinks that, well, you know, what if the person commit a crime or am I going to be responsible for that person? 95% mm -hmm. of the time, you are not going to be responsible for that person. The previous administration was trying to implement laws that say, well, if that person use um, public resources, like public assistance, then that person who was an affidavit of support going to have to pay that. But in this current administration, I can't speak for the upcoming one, but this one, that is not a thing. So things change each... Things change every administration. And since I started practicing, you know, um, it went from Obama to Trump to Biden, and it's been a change. So why you decide to choose? Because you can be criminal attorney, you can do all of that attorney, and why you decide to do um, immigration attorney? Because it's personal to me, you know, because I went through it, I go through it, and um, it became very, very natural. You know, it's something that I didn't have to make a huge, huge effort with. Um, and, you know, it, it it's a different feeling with telling a man, say, yo, um, you know what, retainer, come through, you know, but you have to do this five years. So mm -hmm. that's a different type of feeling and conversation for me than saying to somebody, hey, you know, you just got approved or, you know what? You might have a go on for, for a little bit, but we'll be able oh, to just get it back. Oh, just understand. Just understand. You catch it. You catch it. You're my boss, you but you have to do seven years yeah. and then you come on road. No. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. Yeah, true. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so so it's a different type of feeling. And, and I mean, I still do criminal cases and a couple of criminal cases has um, scarred me, you know, because sometimes it's morally, you know, um, deal with the rape and them type of thing then it is a it's a different type of more moral feeling oh you have to have a you have, your moral character for different yeah so with yeah. this you kind of and yeah. then are your people you know exactly exactly and being through that situation like for me it's different when i can look at somebody and know exactly what they have gone through exactly what they're experiencing i know if you can help them or not exactly come i can feel what i'm feeling on the other side, no, boss, I can't feel what you're feeling. Up, but, <laughs> hey, but can't no, that's how we're not going to do that. That's how we're not going to do that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Um, but again, I still do them. Um, but immigration fee is very natural. Yeah. Very, very natural. If if me was in a, the attorney fee, I feel like me that do immigration. Because yeah, me, me just me just feel like Feel like yeah, do it already, pan. On YouTube. <laughs> I feel like I'm feel like I'm a YouTube immigration person there. Yeah. No, but it just it's just amazing for for be able to help mm -hmm. because everybody know me as a thirty second, one minute Instagram person. Mm -hmm. For for be able to help and reach people in a different way, for be seen in a different light. Mm -hmm. Me enjoy that. Me enjoy if you can teach somebody something. Exactly. And then works. because me no want nobody tell me say me a liar. Better them say you are liar exactly. because they're right beside of me. Yeah. You know them way there? Yeah. So me enjoy it. The people them, me know I have some questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And me don't know if I don't want to break for God, but I want to ask the question. If anybody know ready? And nobody go on like on the shine and it's free. And then one thing I will say um, to people, if it's not about making money, um, the sleep that you sleep is way different 
when you're undocumented, the sleep completely different when you're a green card holder versus when you're a US citizen. Is a complete different type of piece. Yo, me not lie. When me walk out of that place there, or when me get this Wednesday, yeah. I can't I could have leave me down and me just get up and walk off. Because <laughs> me, me week good. So it it just happened full circle, say, right after me finish that, me end up and do this. Yeah. And we already did have this plan already. Yeah. So me just like how it turned out. All right, people. Question time. time. Yeah. And I sing y'all singing that miss. What's that? <laughs> what song y'all want no, let's okay so I know like every situation differs like when it comes to cases and everything um, just being a little specific like my dad's been undocumented for like over 20 years right so generally speaking when it comes to situations like that is um, what are some of the requirements for like a petitioner if someone wants to file behind um, like on his behalf or like what are some specific situations that would disqualify someone to file on his behalf Okay, so the first question that I'd ask is how, how he entered the country, right? If he entered on a visa versus entered uninspected. So if he did enter on a visa, um, if he has a U.S. citizen child, that's over 21, that person can petition for him. Or Even if, if he was like arrested? Well, it depends on the type of crime. When he came in? Huh? Like when you first come in, if he was arrested and uh, they let you out. Okay, so if he so if he was arrested when he just entered the country, that means it was at the border. So that I'm assuming that he entered um, as an undocumented person. So that would mean that if he was to marry a U.S. citizen or if his U.S. citizen child that's over 21 was to petition for him, that would work, but he would have to leave the country and re-enter. Generally speaking. Is there a chance when you ever leave the country for that purpose, like you won't be allowed back in? So um, typically when our firm, typically when our firm does it, we make sure that we have a waiver that was filed and the waiver was approved before we have the person leave the country because that significantly increases the chance of, of him coming back. Usually when somebody's not let back into the country, that means there was something at the consular level, meaning at the consulate in the home country that went wrong. Like either they lied about something or some information on the application wasn't correct. And something was concealed from the person preparing the, the application. And um, you had said something, if anything can disqualify. So any U.S. citizen can file. The only thing that can, um, so even if that person went to prison or went to um or committed violent crimes, that person can still file for someone. The only thing that can prevent a U.S. citizen from filing and petitioning for somebody is if they committed a crime against a child. Okay. All right. You touched on um, being paroled in when you first when we first started the conversation. Yes. So that's considered a legal form of entry when you come into the border paroled in, right? Correct. If someone's passport is seized, what would be the reason for that if they were paroled in? And is there a way that your firm would be able to help them get their passport back? Typically, that's not something we handle. Um, I always tell them to just reapply um, because in my experience, it's been a nightmare trying to get back those documents. Um, in all the years I've been practicing, I think I've only gotten back somebody's passport once and it was it took a long time and it was hectic but typically they hold on to the passport would it be against the law to file your passport as missing or lost in that case you know what that's a good question it just depends on what documentation you signed um but typically you can hi um i just have a question so my mom is undocumented right um, and my dad is a U.S. citizen, and so are all her kids. But she has started a petition already with my dad, like, you know, as her spouse. But she's been through various lawyers, and they just kind of, like, mess things up along the way. Um, if she wanted to start a petition again, say, with me, who's, like, a U.S. citizen, I have a good income and stuff like that, is that something that she could do? Does she have to do that, like, leave the country thing and come back? Or Absolutely. So, I mean, in hearing that, she's been through a couple of hours, I'm assuming that there is something um, something going on with the way how she entered the country or she probably used a different name 
or there was some type of misrepresentation when she entered the country. So that would have to be the first thing that we would have to address. Then we'd have to file something called a FOIA to see, to really find out why she's been denied or why she's having issues. Okay. But then, yes, if you are, um, well, you are a U.S. citizen, so you could definitely restart that petition. You can restart a petition? Yeah. Okay. But the underlying issue has to be started out first. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kiana. Hi, Kiana. Hi, Kiana. Hi. So I am a U.S. citizen. I have no affiliations with anybody that is undocumented. I'm solely here because I have interest in learning more about the African diaspora and like the problems that plague all of our community. And so something stood out to me that you said. You said if you have good moral standing within the community, um, I'm curious, are there any organizations that stand out to you that can help someone be looked at as a good citizen contributing to the community? I also say that because I'm a part of a sorority, um, Alpha Kappa Alpha. And so when I think of Kamala Harris, who is a member as well, there could be NAACP or NCNW, et cetera. Are there any things that stand out to you that could make somebody look more? And I'm just repeating the question. Yeah. So, I mean, good moral character. There isn't really any organization that stands out, but I always tend to advise clients to find nonprofits that they could assist, that could write a letter on their behalf to say, okay, this person has done X, Y, Z. They have volunteered, um, which lends to their good moral character, especially if it's someone that needs to rehabilitate their moral character versus um, because there, there has been infractions or issues in the past. So simply no, no one um, place stands out in mind, but I wish that there was more that could say, hey, you know, come and volunteer with us and we can write letters on your behalf that that lends to your moral character. OK. And I also say that because um, is there a certain amount of time that you say, like, you should be involved in a certain organization? You mentioned nonprofits because it's not like, you know, you can just show up and like contribute for like two months. And someone says, yeah, you've done enough to contribute to the community. Yeah, I like to use either. 90 to 180 days as the minimum that you should be able to contribute to an organization to where they can write something that's going to benefit you. Hello, uh, my name is Deandra. Thank you for all the information today. So we're going to get a little personal with my situation here. Um, I'm a Canadian citizen. I'm tired of Canada. There's not enough opportunity for me. I own two businesses, so I'm trying to move here. Where are the businesses? Sorry? Where are the businesses? They're in Canada. They're registered in Canada, but I want to move them here. And then also, um, I want to get my dual citizenship in Jamaica. Both of my parents are Jamaican. So I'm wondering, can I go about the process of all those things at the same time? Or do I have to pursue one at a time? And which one would you recommend me pursuing first? Absolutely. So the Jamaican one is easy. But you can just buy it. <laughs> just <kidding>. Buy that. <laughs> buy that. <laughs> can't buy that. The Jamaica. They want, to, they want to take your passport and mail it, and I can't really do something like that right now. Being here, yeah. it's not wise. So you know, it's a little tricky. So like, I know an agency that I can give you the contact after that. That will do that for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, as it relates to you becoming a U.S. resident. Resi yeah. Okay, resident and um. Did you enter the country on a waiver or a visa? Um, a visa, I guess, because I just flew here. And then I did, told them I don't have a return ticket and I'll probably be staying for two to three months. So, like, it's a it's a big, big difference because if you entered on the waiver that most Canadians have, um, you, you cannot adjust your status here. You have to go back to Canada. But if you entered on a B1, B2 visa, you can adjust your status your your status here so ways that you can do that is depending on the type of businesses that you have in canada if they were um if they have been in existence for two years or more have over 10 employees then you can actually bring bring those businesses here and um work in those businesses right you can also start a business that's an affiliate of that business as well and you'd be able to get some type of status. So, so, so you have a lot of options as a entrepreneur, right? Um, it can be through investment or 
bringing your business here? Hello, my name is Tenen. Um, my question is, um, I know a lot of Africans that are coming through the, the Mexican border. So my question is to you, what should we tell the people that are coming across the border? Like, should we tell them to keep working or? I mean, if they have come across the border, I would definitely tell them to file um, the asylum like right away because that would allow them to to potentially get a work permit and create some more time to find other options. But definitely file a proper a proper asylum um, that's done correctly. All right. Um, my name is Ink Surgeon. And is this this one about filing for family back home. You feel me? So yeah. me have a business and my stepmother that tell me, say, oh, Ray, you can't file for your family them through your business and things. So you can tell me some information on the basics of how you go about dealing with that. Yeah, man. So so if you have a business here, if you as a business owner and you want to use that business to petition for family members in Jamaica. So the first thing that we'd have to look at is what type of business do you have, right? Then the people that you're petitioning for, they have to have either um, work experience in that type of business. So like what type of business do you have? If you're, oh, if you're, I'm a, if you're I'm a tattoo artist. Okay, tattoo artist. Yeah. So um, your family going to have to either know how to do tattoos. Or, so what about them being like assistant or so, accountant yeah, or so. things like that? Yeah, so that's what I was about to get into. So if they have had accounting um, experience, that business can petition for them for something called a perm visa and um, EB1, which would allow them to come into come into your business as a specialized immigrant for your business, uh, and then get a green card in eighteen months, right? But they would have to show that. So, so if it's to come in and do accounting, they cannot just have CXCs. Or if you have like an accounting degree or they something. Have, they have to have um, an accounting degree or have extensive experience um, from a legitimate accounting firm. So they must have like basically an American qualification. Then it no, uh, no, 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 it can be from, UA, UTEC. from that country. So I mean, if they go UA, UTEC, um, PCC, wherever you can get it yeah. from, school or whoop, anyone. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, and then even, and then even if you want to bring them in as a manager for the business, right? Once that them can prove that um, through their resume that they have been in managerial positions, knowing how to run a company, then that can work as well. So your business definitely can petition for them. And next way that you can do is is you open up another tattoo shop, right? You open up another tattoo shop. And have them invest in fifty or fifty-one percent of that other tattoo shop where they will own fifty-one percent, and then they can come up on an E two investor visa. So they would have to show that say the value of a, a tattoo startup shop is um, is sixty or seventy thousand dollars, right? And they can come up with half half of that, and they are investing in that. Well, they can come up on an E two visa in that tattoo shop. So, so there are those two options, either the investment side or the come in as a worker. So where the process start from with that? It start from here or Jamaica consulate? No, it starts from here. The, the, the last step is always the consulate. Okay. All right, that's it. So my, so I want to sit down with the question and my door ask them, you know? Yeah. At them three here in front, you see them three here? And I have nothing to ask. All right. I uh, only first I got run to the liar when we're done. Here's my situation. Um, I'm a graphic freelance graphic designer. I've been doing it for five years. Um, my wife is a green card holder. Um, so, and I'm now residing in St. Lucia. So I want to come up here. Uh, what will be my options for that? So, so you are not residing in the U.S.? No, I reside in St. Lucia. In where? St. Lucia. St. Lucia. So she can petition for you, right? So it will start out by her as a green card holder fi filing an I-130 for you, right? You will then get um, a priority date. Once that priority date becomes current, then she's able to, to, to file through that consulate to get a visa for you. Or if you're staying in the U.S., 
um, you can either find a different status to go on, such as um, an employment-based visa where a company petitions for you, or say you started a business, um, a graphic design business as an E2, and then by that time she become a- Spare work is on, online. Most of my clients are online, so- Yeah, man, you can still start a business that run online. Online my business then? Because I already have a ITIN number for that specific person, purpose. Okay, so you'd have to get the business incorporated here in the US, and um, you would have to do an E2 based on the limited facts that you tell me. You'd have to do an E2 where we would look at what's the typical startup cost for a graphic design business. Then you'd have to show that you invested that amount of money in it and you'd be able to get an E2 visa. It's not a green card, but what that would allow you to do is that would allow you to stay here um, until that visa becomes current and then, and then you can adjust your status here or your wife become a US citizen and um, you can adjust here. Will that make everything else easier if she just become a citizen? Yes. Oh, um, could I, while, do, while that is happening, could I be traveling back and forth? So the only risk that you run with, with going back and forth is that if you get an immigration officer that's having a bad day, they see your travel history and they can cancel your visa and say, hey, you are coming here to work. So just pick the right line. Yeah. And when you are coming, are you good? And the right airport. Right airport. Avoid Miami and JFK. And JFK. <laughs> so avoid Miami yeah. and JFK. And morning flights. BDL airport, Hartford. You're good. Is there a specific travel document that I can file to travel? No. Okay. Hi, my name is Chanel. Um, so I recently got married. Um, my question is, thank you. My question is having a a child. I have a child here. She's a citizen. Um, how would that benefit or is there any benefit to, you know, having her as a U.S. citizen to my immigration proceedings? Uh, um, so you said that you are, you're a green card holder? No. No. Okay. So um, the only time it's a potential benefit is if you're in removal proceedings, but there will not be an immediate benefit until that child is 21. Sorry, I didn't properly introduce myself the first time. My name is Nyasia. Um, I'm kind of in a very ghetto situation with... <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the podcast. Don't no, no worry yourself, miss. What are we, what are we ghetto? <laughs> what are we ghetto? In a Sweden? <laughs> so, um, when I turned 21, I petitioned for my mother, who's from Belize. I'm now engaged to a Belizean citizen who's trying to become a U.S. citizen here. And she's not happy about that. So, and his family's not happy about it either. That you are petitioning for him? Yes. So basically, he's in the U.S. Okay. Both our families are just meddling and just not happy about the whole process. You are spending money? Sorry? You spending the money, right? Uh, no comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so is there, if he gets in any sort of trouble here, does that negatively affect my mom's case in any way because I had to you know do the affidavit of support for her and then eventually when we get married I will have to do affidavit of support for him as well um what can I give basically the family as reassurance and these are two separate cases entirely they won't get intertwined in any at any point right okay so so you okay so you're a U.S. citizen and you are and you are in the process of petitioning for your mother I did already, and I'm. So is she? A, so she's already a green card holder. Okay, so so she's already a green card holder, and then you want to now petition for your soon-to-be husband. Yes. Um. So if he gets into trouble, if it will affect the process, no, no. The the the, the only thing that you'd have to look at is if you are going to be the affidavit of support is if your income will be able to support your mother and support him. Okay. I didn't think that was one thing I didn't think about because I feel like it's been so many years already since I petitioned for her, but she's not a she's not naturalized yet. She's still just a green card holder. Yes, yeah, so you're still on the hook. Got it. I'm so responsible for 
even though she's now um working and earning an income for herself and do so filing her taxes and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean they'll again it depends on the officer that gets your file, but typically um they really won't take it into consideration. But I always advise just do it the proper way and um just assume that they're going to count her as one of your dependents. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a brother who is in Jamaica. Um, so he had a visa. He was traveling back and forth for a couple of summers, maybe like two, three summers. And then on his probably third um, visit, he they stopped him. I think they searched him and they canceled his visa, I believe. Um, so I was just wondering how could he put himself, put himself in a better situation to get here? Okay, so, um, that's something that we didn't address okay. during the talk, which has been like huge now in our office. More and more visitors' visas are getting canceled. I mean, people from Canada, people from Australia, people, uh, I mean, especially Jamaicans, the visas are getting canceled. Once you are extensively traveling to the U.S., um, they are now examining that more. If you are, say, for instance, you come here, you stay four months, then you go back for two months, then you come and you stay five months, they are starting to look deeper into that and say, well, um, obviously you don't have ties to your home country if you're here in the U.S. almost more than you're at your home country, right? And they are going to assume that you're here working, and that opens up the that opens up a window for them to look into the phone, look through your text messages, and once they see anything even remotely close to that you are working, that visa is cancelled. Can you get back that visa? It is extremely, extremely, extremely difficult because when you have a tourist visa, a visitor's visa, you are on the lowest or the lowest totem pole. I mean, um, once they take it away for whatever reason, it's extremely difficult to get it back. How can you attempt to get it back? Well, you can try to establish that one, you have significant ties to your country, such as you have an extensive work history, you have assets, um, you have money in the bank, and you have no intention of staying in the US. Um, hi, Hello. I'm Sam, and, and I'm a full-time MBA student just across the street at Baruch. And thank you. And my visa expired in January of this year. Which visa? Your student student visa expired in January? Yeah, at the time I was on OPT because I also did my undergraduate degree here as well. So as Dale said, if there is an emergency back home, you don't want to be in a position where you can't travel. So I contacted my school and they told me you would have to file for another visa. Like, you know, like you start the process all over again. But the caveat with that is my mom petitioned for me last year. So that is in the process. And when you go on the consulate website and you're filling out the application, they're asking, has someone petitioned on your behalf? So my question is, if I were to select yes, that someone has... No, you have to select yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so when I select yes, that someone has petitioned on my behalf, will that affect me getting another student visa? Because normally you have to show that you have, you know, ties to your home country. Um, that's a really good question. Because with visas, they look at the intent, right? So if you are... If you are um, in the process of filing for a student visa, they're saying you have an intent to study, but after you have completed your study, you're going back to your home country. When they see another petition, um, a family-based petition, well, it's showing that you do have intentions to stay. I mean, it's not uncommon. Again, it's all going to come down to... Um, the officer. The officer. But in this era... Um, I mean, one one of the rare good things that the previous administration did was um, they they added credits to people who were doing advanced degrees. So 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 we actually advise people in your situation that you are waiting on a family base to do to do a student visa that will keep you here. So I mean, I don't see any um, issues, but again comes down to the officer. So, so you just have to be 100% on the 
upfront and make no misrepresentations. Hi, I'm Ronel. Thank you for doing this. So along the same lines, how would you advise someone who left Jamaica, came up on the F1 student visa, finished college, interned CPT, OPT, then was sponsored H-1B and is on their second H-1B approaching expiration. The company has agreed to move forward with the green card, but they're moving really slowly and it's not actually happening and the expiration date is approaching. Is there any way for that person to get the company to speed up the green card filing or is it really a case of sit and wait and just hope for the best? It, it's a case of calling us to take care of it for you. Yeah, um, no, like we see those situations all the times because companies that have have um, lawyers that yeah. do these petitions, they, it, it's like a lot of times it's, it's either not their specialty one or they have so many dealing with that um, it's not like a, a priority, right? But it also could be you are in the regular processing time because if they are doing an EB-1 visa for you, a perm visa, it's 18 months. It's H-1B and then one expired, then renewed the H-1B. And oh, that, yeah. So are they petitioning for a green card for you? or They have agreed to, but have not started perm. Okay. So that's probably what you need us to do for you. Okay. The, the H-1B is going to be contingent on um, if they applied and if they had any visa left and they're waiting for the next period that opens up for to to apply for another h1b well they did that we're on the second one and that's it after six years right oh okay you're on the second okay got it so so they have to file the perm so they have to file the perm i haven't so do you like can i press them is it time to press and say it needs to be done now or just yeah can she do it herself without their help um i mean yeah through us Yes. So basically, basically, don't wait for nobody, yeah? Exactly. Don't wait because because I've seen many people in your situations because if it's a company lawyer handling just employees, a lot of times it falls through the cracks and as the people go out of status and there really isn't isn't any um, any retribution for the person, you know? So... So be very vigilant. Okay, so I don't think this mic is working. My name is Renee Kendall. Thank you guys both for uh, this informative panel. Um, you mentioned that, that your firm handles deportation and removal hearings. I wonder if you could speak to um, whether there is a path, if someone has been deported, whether there is a path for them to return to the U.S. after they have been deported from the United States in certain circumstances. Absolutely. In in um, I mean, there's always a path, but will it be approved? The ones I see don't get approved um, 90% of the times as if the person got deported for a crime that involved um, trafficking or a violent crime that involves a weapon. So typically there isn't really a, a, a comeback, legal comeback from that. Um, if it was a crime that involved marijuana, there's a good chance because marijuana has evolved and the way how they treat that. Um, and if it was like a misdemeanor and that person just had poor representation, there's definitely a way to come back with a waiver. You know, we've done it before. If a child is petitioning, or a spouse is petitioning, once there's a solid waiver where we can prove that that U.S. citizen is going through some type of hardship and their life is going to be better with that person here in the U.S., then that gives us grounds for them to come back. The way how we do it, we file the um, I-131, then we have to file a strong waiver. Once that gets approved, then we can bring the person back. Thank you. All right. All right, people. So when we realize... So we are doing things different, you know. We have a whole, we have a whole like a panel. People get for ask them questions. People get whole heap of things off of them chests, you know. Yeah. Me proud of myself for be able to do this. Yes. As a, a citizen. As a, <laughs> as a citizen now. As a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everybody we here, are gonna eventually get to write your so which part me there. Yes. Because whoever leave yours today, I'm sure say. 
somebody come here with some information in their brain mm -hmm. and realize say a madness. Say a lot of people do that tell. Mm -hmm. Somebody come here and somebody learn something. Hopefully. Why if me can't help you know? If you don't learn, I don't know one more, one more, one more, one more <laughs> urgency people need. Yeah. But this is just, we are trying to get people to understand, say, yo, help is there. You can find the help. Mm -hmm. And you might not find it from the person where I gave the joke here and there, but some of the time, that person will find a way to help you. Mm -hmm. And you there, Everybody have the access to you. They always are still up on TikTok and on Instagram. Yes. And we have the opportunity for the righteous so right now. So the time we have left after the podcast, me need to know if we can bombard him with questions. I don't know about immigration. Don't ask me. Him we tell a lie them few. Me can't do that. And we have the team as well. We have attorney Tim Shalemo. The, the Haitian sensation speaks French and Creole. And we have... Um, the five-star paralegal from Cali, Colombia, and Miami, mm. Leslie Estrada. So, so there are more hands. Yes. So, all on the, all on the questions, all on the concerns, everything we never get out, and you can ask them. Um, as it relates to me, um, me had a stand-up comedy. Um, me had a comeback at New York in a different manner. You know, more joking. You know, me. Had, I free up, I loose up, up look like more. Bit, yeah. yeah. Um. So me I do a stand up comedy tour. I'm um, wanting to check it out. It, it name Bad Pitney, Problem Child. You know, me's a trouble troublemaker. Long time me I get trouble. No, me I make money off of the trouble what me I give. Mm -hmm. So that kind of good. But people, me love the people that me come out. We get mm -hmm. a nice little turnout. Yeah. We're glad me teach somebody something. Mm -hmm. And today the vice was real and the reason was raw. I'm big up for the self, we're out. That's so. <laughs> nice.